So welcome to the very first Tech Tuesday, where as an extra video on Tuesdays, some Tuesdays, not all Tuesdays, I'd like to post a video that isn't necessarily virtual reality related, but anything technological, so it could be about cameras or gimbals or drones, anything, anything gadgety basically. So here's the first one. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about all the equipment I like to use to make my YouTube videos. Hello, welcome back to the VRC, and if you're interested in virtual reality and Quest 2 accessories and other technological devices, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a video. So, um, a video I've been meaning to do for a while, basically we're going to look at all the different pieces of equipment I use to make my YouTube videos. We're talking uh, cameras, tripods, microphones, teleprompters, lights, all the things like that. We're gonna have a look at the uh, the old studio where it all started that I haven't used for a while. And maybe you'll find out why I haven't been there for a while too. So uh, let's get right into it then. So first of all, the camera that I've been using recently is this Sony ZV-1. Hello Sony ZV-1, so it's filming as well. The Sony ZV-1 is basically a camera that's meant for vlogging. So a lot of people will get a Sony ZV-1, they'll be walking down the street kind of saying, hey YouTube, how you doing? Today we're going to uh, a party and we're gonna go see a friend of mine, that kind of thing. So, but it's the main reason I wanted it is I really wanted the point and shoot camera, which this is, and, um, and one that could do the blurred background effect because a lot of point and shoot cameras don't do the blurred background effect, which can help make your videos seem more professional. Now back in the start, back at the start, I used the, my phone basically. So the first quite a lot of videos were all done on my phone, which was fine. It actually does a, blur, a fake blurred background. We'll have a take a look at that now. Um, it doesn't look great, but it, you know, at, the, at the time I quite liked it. Decent camera. The only problem is um, a lot of my earlier videos were scripted, so I used uh, selfie cam. And the selfie camera is not quite as good quality as the, the camera at the back, which is actually really good. Um, I'd get the, the script on the screen right there, as close to the, the camera as possible. The, the, the app is really good. I'll uh, flash that up on the screen right now because I can't remember what it's called. Okay, it's called Nano Teleprompter. I don't know if it's on um, Apple, but it's on Android. Nano Teleprompter, highly recommend that. Um, I'll show you how that works in a second with my actual teleprompting device. So yeah, that's the Sony ZV-1. I recommend that. If you, if you want to know, if you want more uh, in-depth reviews of any of the pieces of equipment that I talk about today, do let me know in the comments because I'll be happy to uh, do that. Don't worry, virtual reality lovers, I'm not moving away from virtual reality at all. I just like to get some extra videos out every now and again about a bit of technology that I'm using, cameras and uh, other stuff like that. I'd like to look at um, PEVs too, personal electric vehicles. Very interested in that at the moment. So, you know, electric scooters, electric bikes, things like that. Uh, we just bought an electric car, so if you want to know about buying a used Nissan Leaf, let me know about that in the comments as well. Maybe we could do a road trip as well, see how that works out, because I know a lot of people are going electric at the moment. So, uh, you might be wondering what the Sony ZV-1, ZV-1, is connected to, uh, and that is the Hohem iSteady gimbal. Hang on, let me turn that around a bit for you. Basically, is what can keep it really steady. So um, if, I get, if I switch back to the Sony camera, so I'm back on the Sony camera again, I walk around the room, it'll kind of trap my face and I, I'm bobbing up and down, but it, it manages to keep me pretty steady. Whereas without it, it'd be all jerky everywhere. Now the Sony ZV-1 does have its own image stabilization, but the problem is the way it does it, because it's digital, it'll zoom you right in. So when you're doing selfie videos, it'll be like that. It'll be like, hello, how are you doing? So whereas most people would want it about that distance. So the gimbal that cost it's about 140 pounds from Amazon, that is really handy. It's connected to a cheap Manfrotto tripod. Some people will just connect that to the camera and it's just good to hold it. But I like having the controls. So let's have a look at those controls. Those controls just to move it up and down and you can focus, zoom in and out. Um, the record button is there, that's really handy. I like having the record button there so I don't have to fiddle around up there at the top, do things like that. So, really like that. Now the question is, what am I talking into right now? Um, it's quite an old camera that I bought originally when I was doing uh, music YouTube. 
So I used to be a music YouTuber, do some songs and stuff like that. I've done it, I still do a few every now and again, but not too often. The EOS 600D, which is a 1080p um, DSLR camera, which is, which in its time, at its time, was a very decent camera. Uh, it's still decent, but it is only 1080p, it doesn't do 4K, although I don't actually film in 4K. Um, it was really good. It's got the, the standard standard lens on there, which you might not be able to see because of the reflection of the thing. Oh, hello. We can, which you can just about see in there. That's the lens that comes with it. I did buy a really narrow lens so you can get really narrow field of view, uh, kind of like Zack Snyder likes to use, uh, which looked really good. And I use that a lot in my uh, music videos, but I don't use it too much now, so I don't really need to. If I'm honest, people don't really care if you've got a blurred background, it's just something I like doing. And I haven't actually been doing it much recently. So yeah, that's the camera. Um, at the time, it was about £600 or something. Now you can probably get a second-hand one for a lot cheaper. Now, on that, connected to it, is the teleprompter. So this teleprompter by Andua from Amazon, about £90, is really handy. Uh, it allows me just to keep that camera stuck in there. So when I did my intros in the shed, if I was reading off a script, I would use that teleprompter and I'll show you how it's done. Uh, so I'll take the phone. By the way, that's connected to just a selfie stick that's connected to a fairly cheap, tr cheap tripod. And I tend to use that as the second camera when we're doing unboxing videos. So if I take that, so I'll load up the, uh, the Nano teleprompter app. Now here's video 113. So here's the last time I actually did a script, video 113. So basically you put the script in there, uh, when you press play, it appears on the screen and it's backwards, okay? And the reason it's so narrow is because when I put it on here, well, it's backwards because it's gonna get reflected. And if you look at it, it's really narrow because I want it to go directly over the lens. When you have it wide, you can make it wide to fit the whole phone, but then you're, you're reading from left to right. And it's, when you're over here, you're not looking at the lens there. When you're over there, you're not looking at the lens there. So that's why I have it going through the middle. And it comes with this really cool, if you can see it, remote control, okay? So let's pull it back a bit. So basically, when I turn this on, you know, you, you can set your speed, and I'm like, so the main brands that we all know from Amazon that make accessories, the Quest 2 include, but then, oh no, I've messed up, I need to go back. And you can scroll down and up at your own speed, and it's really, really handy. When I started doing YouTube, I tried to just do it off the cuff and just to make it up, kind of like I'm doing right now. But what I found was it just took a long, long time. So taking the time to actually write a script, I found that I could write the script, I could put, uh, think of like jokes to put in and things like that. And then it was a lot easier just to read it off the, the teleprompter than it was just to kind of think of it there and then. So I highly recommend that if you were starting a YouTube channel where you've got a lot of information, a teleprompter is a really, really good investment. Right, so also connected, if you want to know more about that, remember just to let us know in the comments. Also connected to this, uh, this camera is the Rode VideoMic Go. So that's a shotgun microphone that slits on top of that and then it plugs into the microphone. Obviously to use it, your camera does need a microphone input, which this does have. Um, it's a very decent microphone. Um, I do, I have moved on from it. I'll show you why, I'll, st I'll tell you why in a second. I'm still gonna use it, obviously I'm just using it right now because it is a high quality uh, microphone. We did find a notable increase in our sound quality when I started using it, especially for our unboxing videos because I, I was using the phone camera before that. So that's really cool, again, if you want to know more about that, let me know. Uh, but now though, I've started using, oh, there's the light, by the way, so a little light that's uh, shining on me. You'll see light from uh, Vigim, VL120 from Amazon. That's handy just to, to fill in a bit of light. So there's the light, there's we've on, there's we've gone. You can see the kind of difference. It just, it just kind of fills your face out a bit more. It's very nice. Not too expensive, I think it's about 10 or 20 pound. Not really sure, but it's on Amazon. There's loads, to be honest. Um, and that's a good one. Let's put that back over there. It does mount to a camera as well, but at the moment I've got no free mounts. Um, to solve that problem, actually, I have used in the past, I'm not using it right now because it doesn't work as well as I'd like with the gimbal, but this is this small rig which fits around the Sony ZV-1. And then it allows you, if it's got these holes, you can put the, uh, you can mount things on top 
so you can get more accessories. Uh, and it's got loads of holes at the bottom so you can put the tripod in different places as well. So that's really handy. So the microphone I'm using right now is the Comica Boom. So let's get a bit closer to that. So this is a wireless lavalier microphone. So you can clip it straight onto here. It does come with uh, wind muffs and also it comes with a separate microphone that you can plug into that. So I could, if I wanted to, I could clip this to my waist and then have a little smaller microphone there that's less visible. But I don't mind just shoving this on my t-shirt. Uh, if you were doing interviews or whatever, you might want, you might prefer that. Another way of using this is sticking it on the end of a stick and you can actually use it as a microphone so you can put it in someone's face. So I did a video with Steve about when we were racing him on his bike and me in virtual reality and I was interviewing outside, the wind was blowing, you could barely hear a word we were saying. He's ridden here of course, being a professional cyclist. <laughs> but the next time I go out is going to help a lot with that, so is the Video Mic Go. With this, it comes in a little uh, case, really nice case like that, and there's three slots with uh, another version, well another one, which I can give to someone else, so Jess will wear that and I'll wear that, and then it's got a receiver that sits on top of the camera, which I'll just pull out. So there's the receiver there, and that just clips nicely into the uh, the accessory shoe and sits on top and obviously plugs in as well. So obviously you need a microphone and the Z. I'm so used to YouTube videos from Americans that say ZV1, so I keep saying ZV1. ZV1 um, has a microphone input, which some point and shoot cameras don't have. So in the past, I have actually recorded videos separate to sound and then put them together at the end, but I'm all about trying to make things as fast as possible. So all the sound in the video is recorded together now. And another microphone that myself and Jess both use, especially when we're gaming, so this is more when we're actually playing virtual reality, is the Ant Lion Mod Mic. Mod Mic. Mod Mic. Mod Mic. So uh, that comes in a nice little case. It's got Ant Lion on the front, and it has got the microphone and receiver. So this, this generally, this is used with a PC. So the USB receiver goes into the PC, uh, you pair it up and then this, it comes with a little magnet on there and then you get little magnets in the set. Here's one of them actually, I haven't used yet. So there's a little magnet and then that will plonk on whatever you want. It doesn't have to be for VR, it can be used um, for a normal gaming headset. So if you want a better microphone but you love your headphones, uh, you can just put the magnet on the headphones, plonk that on, and then you've got a really high quality microphone for, for, uh, for used when you're gaming, if you're streaming or uh, whatever. So these Antlion mod mics are very, very good. So let's go into the shed and we'll see what's going on in there. So walking through the garden, this is where Jeff chased me around last year uh, and about 100 people watched it, something like that. I thought that video was going to be massive as well, but oh well. Every time when you start a YouTube channel, you think maybe this is the video, maybe this is the video that takes off. Right, we've currently got a barbecue. So there we've got a barbecue in there. Uh, we've got a bike that we're keeping here at the moment. We've got this leg magic that we're about to sell. Right, there's the computer uh, where I edit the video. Well, where I used to edit the videos, I've moved away into the front room. We are gradually going to move this into the house. Uh, actually, there's the computer. That's the, the keyboard and the monitor. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. We've got Will's bike. We did have a scooter down there, but it's in the house right now. We've got this vehicle. So basically, it's a big mess in here. But some of the things in here we did use. So uh, I used this light to fill the right side of my face. And on the left-hand side, we had a ring light there. So basically, just lights either side of my face just to uh, kind of fill the shadows in a bit. And I spoke into this Rode microphone, Rode M1, I believe it's called. So Rode M1 microphone, which is on a stand. So I'm talking to that, recording that using uh, Adobe Audition. And then I would just mix it into the video later on in Adobe Premiere. So yeah, that's the, that's the big mess of a stu uh, previous studio. I think the, the plan is here, it's gonna become more of a storage and gym in future. We are getting a conservatory put on the back of the house, so that's going to be more of the, the editing place. And then at some point, we might even get some sort of professional looking background. I know a lot of people like the kind of homely in the house kind of feel of the later videos, but uh, I do wonder if it puts it off, puts people off sometimes. So back in the house again. Yeah, anyone watching this, what do you think? Um, do 
If you're watching a YouTuber, do they really need the, uh, the professional looking background with the neon lights and the, the cool posters and things like that? Does it put you off if someone's just sitting in there in the lounge? I know a lot of big YouTubers are just sitting there in the lounge. Uh, a lot of the old music YouTubers used to do all their songs in the bathroom. But, uh, but yeah, let me know. I'm always interested to what people think. You know, I have my own opinions, but everyone's got their own opinions and it's always, it's always very interesting, which is why I always try and reply to everyone's comments as well. So uh, again, that's it then. If there's anything in that video that you saw and you'd want to see a more in-depth look at, please let me know. If you've got any other questions about, if you wanted to start a YouTube channel, let me know as well in the comments. I'll reply to that. And if you found that video helpful at all, please do hit that thumbs up button. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you are interested in keeping up to date on the future of virtual reality, Oculus Quest, and other technological things. You've been watching the VRC. Thanks very much. Take care of yourselves. Hope to see you next time. See ya.